disaster recovery techniques. When it comes to setting up our disaster recovery scenarios and our disaster recovery configurations, we want to be aware that we really need to look at, um, first of all, the the provider. And we need to look at the provider because we need to make sure we have the appropriate latency to meet the uh, replication requirements of the application or applications we are setting up the DR plan for. We need to validate bandwidth. Do we have 10 meg or 10 gig of bandwidth or 100? Whatever is appropriate, we need to make sure that that's available on the link. We also should enable compression to help uh, minimize any kind of uh, additional um, areas around performance and, and also to uh, save uh, network bandwidth if possible. We want to take a look at mirroring and what database mirroring does is it's going to create a copy of our database. And we want to use that because it typically can increase performance and also increase availability as well. So basically this is where we're going to have basically an application that is running essentially a database and we're going to mirror this and have basically an AB um, application configuration uh, that is live and this gives us an alternate site to use for production at the same time. On the other hand, if we have, for example, one site go out, we still have the failover site still up and running without any kind of real requirement to bring it back up. Now, when it comes to synchronous replication and asynchronous replication, these are the two types of replication. These are the forms. Generally asynchronous, we're going to use when we have a really intense, basically RTO and RPO to meet. We need to make sure that, for example, if it's financial transactions, that we have very low latency, that we have high bandwidth, that we uh, have, for example, as well, the appropriate tools in place to ensure that replication uh, is able to, uh, for example, take the uh, snapshot or take the um, basically the staging disk and copy that over to the, re the uh, remote site. Now, of course, it depends on uh, the, the array, uh, for example, uh, the storage array. That's going to be, of course, sold by specific vendors. So whether it's HP, EMC, um, HP, 3 par uh, Hitachi, generally um, they're going to have uh, tools that are going to be in place for you to replicate as efficiently as possible. Now, when it comes to synchronous replication, this is really meant to provide what is a zero data loss. Now, on the exam, if there's anything that really asks for the the most uh, optimal RPO or zero data loss, you know probably where to go with that. But basically, again, if we're going to mirror one instance, then that's going to replicate pretty much at the exact same time that transaction is being written to that source, um, for example, volume. And then over here, it replicates directly over to the uh, target volume. That, of course, is uh, more expensive. Now, asynchronous is going to be, and that should be asynchronous, actually. Uh, asynchronous is basically considered uh, basically um, a uh, local-based acknowledgement. Basically, what's going to typically happen is that you'll have, and again, every vendor is different, but basically, the overall picture is you'll have data being sent out and then the the target volume will actually send an acknowledgement before it's actually written in a lot of cases again uh, emc hitachi for example handle things a little bit differently on the other hand the cloud vendors of course handle things a little differently as well so the main area on the exam around replication is to know the difference between synchronous and asynchronous replication. 
understand there's a guarantee of delivery and understand what is the best RPO when it comes to replication. Is it synchronous or asynchronous?